And self-leadership is basically how you show up and that you show up from a place that is all about um, your intentions, that is not emotionally reactive, that is coming from the thinking part of your brain. And why we need this is because uh, I think of humans as having kind of like, well, there's a, a, a neuroscientist named Daniel Kahneman, a very famous one, and he would describe it that humans have kind of two uh, systems, two two thinking systems. And the first thinking system is very fast. It's uh, it's often based on your emotion or on your habits. It doesn't need any energy. And that system is, uh, like I said, super fast, not accurate whatsoever. It is designed for our survival. So when people think about fight, flight, freeze, or please, some of those like survival instincts, that is all that system one, really fast. That system one is not good for work because it doesn't access our thinking brain. It's all emotionally and survival driven. So what we need is for us humans to really access the best part of us, the part that actually can think about complex things, that can create things from scratch, right? That can innovate, that can cooperate with other people. And all of those things are kind of newer in our human evolution. They come from this frontal lobe part of the brain. And to access it, we need to not be in emotional reactivity. We actually need to be in a kind of a, a, a more calm, emotionally regulated place where our emotions aren't driving us. And I think of business as kind of like a, a game of um, thinking and acting. We really need people who can think about what they're doing, who can solve problems, who can make good decisions, who can recognize when something isn't going quite according to plan, who can adjust and take really good actions. But what ends up often getting in the way is when people are not in self-leadership, and I think of that as when they're in self-protection, meaning that emotionally reactive place, when people are in self-protection, they're no longer thinking about business outcomes. They are literally just thinking about how am I right now? You know, how am I? How about now? Am I in danger right now? Is somebody perceiving me badly at this moment? Am I, you know, am I, if I'm at work, it's like, is, is my boss thinking badly of me? Did, did my coworker just roll their eyes? Do they, are they, you know, are they going to throw me under the bus in a few minutes? Are it's, it's a, we need people to be in a place where they're not worried about themselves. They're not worried about their kind of their own survival. And weirdly, I think of it as today we're, you know, modern humans, we're in a time where we actually don't have to worry about our survival every day. We really don't. Most of the world anyways, the, the you know, this, the, the Western world that we're in right now, we, you know, nobody's going to starve tomorrow. Okay. But we're still wired as if we might. We're still wired in a way that we have this automatic system, this, that we have a, a, an amygdala that takes in all of our information from our senses and looks for threats. And those threats are still very hardwired. And they really get in the way of humans doing what humans are, you know, can, can do like, like nobody else, not even like AI yet. We can still think and process and problem solve and make decisions and create brand new things amazingly better than, than, than anything else. But we got to have people that are in self-leadership to do it. How do you avoid being in self-protection? Or how do you notice that you're in self-protection? And how do you move to self-leadership? Yeah, that's a, it's a great question. And, um, and we all need to learn to do it for ourselves. It starts with recognizing. Recognizing when you're in self-protection. Okay, so... 
So let me just share a few of the really common thoughts, behaviors, uh, things that are going on when you're in self-protection. Okay, those are things like blame, judgment, uh, defensiveness. If you're like me, uh, it's uh, avoidance or hiding. It can be very much about uh, maybe justifying yourself. It can be manipulation. It can just be flat out uh, frozen in fear. And it's really uh, anything where any kind of emotion where you are concerned about yourself. You could be concerned about maybe your kids too, but at the end of the day, it's kind of like that's still about you, right? It's when we are in a place of we're worried about how we're being perceived or how how things might turn out for us, uh, if we're in some kind of a danger, even in relationship to somebody else, we need the first thing we have to recognize is that we're there. So for myself, one of the one of the the things that I know right away is once I start thinking about avoiding something, okay, once I'm thinking about canceling a meeting, <laughs> Because, you know, because maybe I don't want to face what I think might happen in the meeting, or maybe I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm just not ready for it today, whatever excuse I make up in my mind. The first thing I have to recognize is, oh, that's Annie in self-protection. That's that I can recognize that Annie is, you know, easily avoidant when she's feeling a little off, feeling a little insecure. That's what Annie does. And that very first recognition then allows me to, to pause for a second, to pause for a second and work with myself to get myself back to self-leadership. Because the thing is, is when I'm in that place, wanting to avoid things or cancel meetings or whatnot, my rational mind knows that that will make things worse, not better. And I, I'm, I'm sure of that. <laughs> I can't think of a single time that I've been in a super avoidant place and it turned out well. <laughs> it always, you know, makes things worse, not better. And so I've had to learn to first recognize it and then get myself to a more neutral place. Then to get myself to a place where I am emotionally regulated, where I calm myself down. And for some people, it might feel like um, not exactly calming yourself down, but more like getting myself to a, an okay place where I'm not worried about me, I, where I feel like I could handle a call right now. I could face this challenge, whatever it is. And so first, I'm going to recognize I'm not in a good place. Then I'm going to do some things that work for me to calm myself down. For me, I might throw the ball for my dog. I might uh, take a quick walk around the block. I might turn on some music. I might read a couple pages of a, of a good book. Things that I know are helpful for me to see the world more neutrally, not be absorbed by whatever anxiety I had about facing a challenge, you know, 10 minutes ago. I want to get myself to a good place. And then, then once I'm in an okay place, then I'm going to think about my intentions. Then I'm going to think about how do I really want this to turn out? That's one of the first most powerful things that um, anyone can do to get themselves back to self-leadership is not to be thinking about all the reasons I want to avoid it, not to be thinking about all the things that co could go wrong, but instead to be thinking about what is it that I, that I really want to achieve in this call or meeting or in this relationship, in this next interaction? What do I want to achieve? How do I want to look back at this and have this, you know, ha have, have myself proud of how I showed up? Knowing that, you know, if I show up avoidant and, and, and not in a good place, it, it just, it, chances are it just won't go well. And I've proven that to myself over and over again, as all of us humans have. So I recognize, pause, regulate, Go to your intentions. Yes, go to your intentions. Absolutely. And I think of that last R as resolve, basically. It's like, you know, then I I first have to recognize, pause, and regulate to, to even have access to the good part of my 
uh, thinking and my abilities. <laughs>